Welcome to worship this morning. It is our hope and our prayer that you would have an encounter with the risen Lord Jesus Christ. We invite you to stand and join us as we sing, as we celebrate, as we declare the name of Jesus Christ together. Since the days of the earliest church, Christians have gathered on Sunday to join their voices together in praise and in worship, to sing to and about the God who loves the God who saves, the God who is just, the God who is merciful. So let us sing together. We've got a new life. We've got a new life in the light of your love. Called by the name to the Savior of all. We've got a new song. Generations will sing. Oh, oh, oh. We've got a new because of the cross saved by the grace you've given to us we've got a new song all the nations will sing oh 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 oh, 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 oh. for your name shines in all the earth the great above our lives the light of our salvation Give all we are for your glory. We will give all we are, all our lives for the love of your son. We've got a new song now that we are redeemed. Oh, 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 for your name shines in all the earth, great above our lives.
Jesus at the center of it all. Jesus at the center of it all. From beginning to the end, it will always be, it's always been you, Jesus. Jesus, nothing else. Matters. Nothing in this world will do. Jesus, you're the center, and everything revolves around you. Jesus, you at the center of it all. Let us lift our voices together and say, Jesus, be the center of my life. Jesus, be the center of my life. Jesus, be the center of my life. Beginning to the end, it will always be, it's always been you, Jesus, Jesus, nothing else matters, nothing in this world will do, Jesus, you're the center and everything revolves around you Jesus you from my heart to the heavens Jesus be the center it's all about you yes it's all about you from my heart to the heavens, Jesus be the center. It's all about you. Yes, it's all about you. From my heart to the heavens, Jesus be the center. It's all about you. Yes, it's all about you. From my heart to the heavens, Jesus be the center. It's all about you. Yes, it's all about you. Jesus be the center of your church. Jesus be the center of your church. Every knee will bow And every tongue shall confess you Jesus, 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 Jesus There's power in the names of Jesus, Jesus Nothing else matters Nothing in this world will do Jesus, you're the center and Everything revolves around you Jesus, you center of it all may Jesus be the center of our lives may Jesus be the center of this church Jesus may you be the center of it all
are caught hold by a story. The Word of God is the lure that attracts us, and it's a message of love for us all. Redeemed by Jesus, that's the net that gathers all in, a promise of love for all. In that assurance of unconditional love, we worship. We worship the God that draws us all in. Let us pray. Loving God, we bring our empty nets to you and ask that you fill them. We bring our tiredness and discouragement and ask that you fill us with energy and hope. We bring the skills that we have and ask that you teach us new ways of using them. We bring such vision as we have of your kingdom and ask you to enlarge it. We bring ourselves as we are and ask that you use us as you can in the service of that kingdom of joy and peace. Amen. Well, I want to invite everybody this morning to pass the peace of Christ. I actually said that without tripping up over my tongue this week. <laughs> Amongst yourselves, say hello to your neighbors, maybe greet a new friend along the way. The peace of Christ be with you. So assuming I'm reading this bulletin right, which I usually am not, it appears that Pastor Carla is going to be making a band. Finally, my shot at being discovered. I'm Ryan Howe, and let's get to announcements at The Current. Good day, mate. It's Ryan Howe, your wonderful explorer, out here in the wilderness trying to find my way back to St. Mars Church for kickoff Sunday, starting next week, August 14th. So be there and join us as we kick off a new year of discipleship and growth at St. Mars for all children, as all children are invited to move up to next grade for Sunday Kids Church, as well as new 5th and 6th graders are welcome to join in to Club 56 in the Den. And kids also entering 7th and 8th grade are invited to join the junior high group at 9.40 a.m. Youth will kick off their new year as well adult discipleship classes and small groups and everyone is invited to participate in a 2022-2023 upcoming year oh just about my asset i gotta go bye it's that time again and no this time i'm not referring to the return of mexican pizza at taco bell although i have to tell you that is quite delicious but right now i want to talk to you about new study groups such as i'm waiting god the lord's prayer on this spirit walk Genesis, finally, survival guide for the soul. If interested, feel free to stop by the connection table out in the gathering area for more information or sign up for one of these studies. In addition, if you want to sign up online, you may visit stmarshcarmel.org slash study groups. Or if you have any questions, you can always contact Jennifer Cloud Buckner at grow at stmarshcarmel.org. Kids, Music and Praise will have a special event coming up immediately following the service at 11 a.m. It's called Fire, Chimes, and Cookies. Parents are invited as participants will use chimes to orchestrate a story. After the presentation, dessert and cookie treats will be served. During the month of August, we are collecting personal items that homeless youth are needing with our in-kind donations to Outreach. Outreach provides social services and assistance to homeless youth ranging in ages from 14 to 24. Please feel free to see the list of items requested and also to learn more, visit stmarshcarmel.org slash missions. Donation items can be left inside the bins, which is located just inside this door number two. Actually, if I was to make the band, I'd probably be a drummer because I am a rebel. So this rebel just wants to make sure he welcomes all new visitors to St. Mars Church. Please make sure you do register your tents by going to stmarscarmel.org slash attend. You may also fill out the blue book at the end of your pew or you're able to sc scan the QR code in your bulletin. And now let's get back to worshiping at the current. Count us off, Ryan. Cool. 
quiet in the stillness I know that you are God in the secret of your presence I know there I am restored when you
For Jesus, the Son, who came to show us a better way, who came to be crucified and resurrected, who came to reconcile us with you, O oh God, to reconcile us with one another and with the earth and even with ourselves. God, we pray that your reconciliation would bloom, would bloom like the flowers in the springtime, would bloom like the new life of a child. God, we pray for the relationships that are hurting in this world. God, for the ones in our own lives, God, and for the ones of which we are unaware. God, there is so much brokenness that needs your healing. So God, we pray that your spirit would move, would continue to move, and would keep moving through the world around us. God, we pray that you would make us your agents of change in the world. That we might point others to your peace and your love and your restoration and your hope. Open doors and give us the courage, O oh God, to walk through those doors for you and for your name and your glory. For your name shines in all the earth great above our lives. Oh God, you are the light of our salvation. In the name of Jesus Christ, we worship and we pray these things. Amen. You may be seated. Amen. Good morning. Isn't it a beautiful day to be in God's house? Yes. Amen, amen. Y'all are going to get used to me saying that every week, every week. It's beautiful. It's beautiful when we can gather together, and I am so grateful to be here with you all. So welcome. Welcome to those who have joined us in the sanctuary, to those that are joining us online at home, those that might join us later in the week on a replay. That works too. We are just blessed to have you with us. Now, I know um, Ryan was joking on the beginning of the announcement slides about making a band, since that's what we're talking about today. Um, but I'm not joking. These guys are fabulous, and I'd love to give them some help. I know I've got at least uh, one rebel drummer out there that's uh, volunteered to help us out a little bit. And I'm thinking that there's some other folks that, uh, that have a, a, a skill that you can share, a desire to worship with us, uh, and just want to have some, some good, old-fashioned fun up here on a Sunday morning. So if you might be interested in joining that band, please just let me know. So today we are wrapping up our New Kid on the Block series. For the last few weeks, we've looked at some of those early days of Jesus, those early experiences when he was just beginning to make known who he was and beginning to be seen as the Messiah, the one. The one that the people had been waiting for. The one that God sent to save the world. We saw his first miracle at the Cana wedding, turning water into wine, not just on his own, but including the workers, the servants that were present too. And then we saw him take a stand at the temple in Jerusalem, Reminding people about the, the meaning, the purpose of worship. And last week, we saw what happened when he went home and broke the news to the people of Nazareth that they weren't getting special treatment just because they knew him as a kid. So today, today we're going to look at a great passage from the Gospel of Luke where Jesus starts to transition from being a solo act to being Jesus and the Twelve. God's design necessarily required that shift. The time would come when Jesus would not and could not physically lead the movement. 
the transformation of the world that he was launching. So he needed others to spread the message when he was gone. And he knew it was time to start sharing the stage. So he began calling the band of brothers and sisters that would eventually ensure that his teaching would reach every corner of the globe. And he started right there on the shores of the Sea of Galilee. So let's listen from Luke chapter 5, verses 1 through 11. Once while Jesus was standing beside the lake of Genesaret, which is the Sea of Galilee, and the crowd was pressing in on him to hear the word of God, he saw two boats there at the shore of the lake. The fishermen had gone out of them and were washing their nets. He got into one of the boats, the one belonging to Simon, and asked him to put out a little away from the shore. Then he sat down and taught the crowds from the boat. When he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, put out into deep water and let down your nets for a catch. Simon answered, Master, we have worked all night long and have caught nothing. Yet if you say so, I will let down the nets. When they had done this, they caught so many fish that their nets were beginning to break. So they signaled their partners in the other boat to come and help them. And they came and filled both boats so that they began to sink. But when Simon Peter saw it, he fell down at Jesus' knees saying, Go away from me, Lord, for I am a sinful man. For he and all who were with him were amazed at the catch of fish that they had taken. And so also were James and John, sons of Zebedee, who were the partners with Simon. Then Jesus said to Simon, Do not be afraid. From now on, you will be catching people. When they brought their boats to the shore, they left everything and followed him. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Now, fishing has always been a precarious way to earn a living, hasn't it? I mean, it's been the subject of, or a huge part of many TV shows and songs and movies over the years. And I think a lot of that speaks not only to our human fascination with the sea, the water, the unknown parts of it, but also a recognition of that precariousness of relying on it for fishing, for survival. I mean, who hasn't been fascinated when you've seen, scrolling past on your TV, an episode of Wicked Tuna or The Deadliest Catch? Yeah, I know you're out there. I, I know I've stopped my channel surfing more than once thinking, what on earth are these people doing? You know, I, I bet many of us can remember reading The Old Man in the Sea in school. And who, who has seen the perfect storm? Yeah. It's hard to forget how watching Mark Wahlberg at the wheel of the boat, looking up at that huge wave that was about to crash into him, made your heart beat just a little bit faster. Now, when I think of fishing villages, I can't help but go immediately to one of my all-time favorite movies, which I have to admit that now watching as an adult, eh, maybe was not as much of a cinema, cinematographic, didn't say that word right, uh, <laughs> exercise as I had thought when I was a kid. The Goonies. The Goonies. The Goonies families were all in danger of losing their homes in their small fishing village of Astoria because the families weren't earning enough to make their mortgages. And city development, a planned golf course and country club more specifically, threatened to move in and take over. Until, of course, a band of very unusual kids and their quest for pirate treasure saved the day and the town. Now, if you haven't seen it, you must. Let me know. We'll plan a watch party. <laughs> 
Now, although Astoria and the Goonies' plight was just one very lucrative product of Steven Spielberg's imagination, the idea that fishing as a profession can be incredibly impacted by political and economic change, as well as the vagaries of weather and the tide, is anything but new. The fishermen whom Jesus encountered at Lake Gennesaret, who would form the nucleus of his band of disciples, had been badly affected by the building of the new city of Tiberias that was nearby. There were additional taxes to cover the costs of the project that took a heavy toll on the fishing community. And an unsuccessful night's fishing, such as Simon and his friends had just experienced, would have been truly devastating. Now, one positive thing coming from these new pressures was that the fishermen had been somewhat forced to work more closely together, forming cooperatives in order to reduce cost and maximize their profits. They began learning how to really work in community. Jesus' future disciples already knew each other well and were used to depending on each other for financial and practical support in fishing. And all of this would stand them in good stead in their new enterprise of people catching or kingdom building. Now, somewhat similar for us, living through the COVID pandemic has highlighted both the difficulty of working effectively together without being able to meet in person and the ingenuity of ordinary people, including our church members, in finding imaginative ways to overcome those obstacles to community. We've learned a, a few new ways of doing things, haven't we? Before March of 2020, most, most of us had absolutely no real idea what Zoom was, did we? Now, I remembered Zoom as one of my favorite TV shows when I was a kid. I mean, heck, I remember wanting to write the show letters just because they sang their zip code. Oh, two, one, three, four. Yeah, I, I know I'm not the only one <laughs> that remembers that well. But in any event, prior to the pandemic, maybe, maybe we had heard of Skype and Apple aficionados could FaceTime, but now we add Zoom, Teams, Meet, Group, Slack, Twitch. There's a whole new vocabulary to use for ways in which we can gather as a community. Now, we don't know exactly what drew the crowds to Jesus that day. Were they hoping to hear new teaching? Or did they want to hear the stories that were already familiar and comforting in a troubling time? Were they attracted by his more personal message or by his personal charisma and his growing fame? Were they desperate for hope or merely curious and bored? In the midst of the crowds, his exhaustion likely close to overwhelming, compounded with the disappointment of having worked all night and caught nothing, we find a bone-weary Simon, probably desperate to get home and just have a rest, who without protest rose Jesus back onto the lake. Simon recognizes something special in Jesus. When Jesus tells him to put his nets back in the water, Simon calls him master. And despite his grumbling that they'd already worked all night and didn't catch a thing, he did as Jesus told him to do. He had probably dropped that net a hundred times that night and just knew that it was a waste of time to do it again for the hundred and first but he did it. How many times have we been where Simon was? We've done that. It didn't work. We tried it that way. It failed. 
No, really, we've done exactly that thing over and over and over again, and we haven't seen the results that we should have seen. We are exhausted, and no one seems to care. But Jesus says, do it again. Try another time. Take a deep breath and have faith. If Jesus' teaching was addressed to the crowd on the shore, the sign that followed was definitely for the benefit of the fishermen. And it had a profound effect on Simon in particular. Sinking to his knees, he told Jesus to go away because he was unworthy of being in the presence of such holiness. But Jesus tells him, Don't be afraid. Don't worry. Your fishing haul is not what defines you any longer. From now on, you, Simon, who will ultimately be known as Peter and who is the rock upon which the church will be built, you, Simon, will be catching people. Simon listened, and he followed. James and John, Simon's fishing partners, they saw and heard all of this and just had to follow too. So the question today is about you and I. Can we hear it? Now, I want to share with you all something that I read this week as we close the the end of the message today. It, It came from a publication by the Church of Scotland, which is an amazing resource that I have found super helpful in finding new ways for me of of seeing and experiencing Jesus. So as we we near the end of this time together, I want to invite you all to, to sit back, relax, close your eyes. No, I mean it really, close your eyes. And imagine with me. Imagine a shoreline. Imagine the sounds you hear and the smells you smell. In among the sounds of waves and wind and the aroma of sand and water, imagine another sound, the sound of a crowd, the babble, the sound of feet in the sand, of voices calling. Imagine one voice raised higher than the others, loud enough to be heard over the rabble, a voice that was teaching, storytelling. But but you can't quite make out what is being said. Imagine a pause in his voice, almost giving up because he cannot be heard, the sound of more feet on the shore trying to get closer. What can you hear? Now you turn around and you see two boats on the shore a short distance away. You hear the crowd beginning to follow the man who had been teaching as he moves toward the boats. Imagine the sound of him clambering in the grate of wood on stone and the voices of the ones who own the boat realizing that it's being borrowed. Listen to them shout, hey, wait, and the conversation that has them decide to clamber in as well. Imagine the sound of the boat being pushed off from the shore and onto the water. The whole day feels like it has gone silent, leaving only the ripple of waves on the side of the boat. But the crowd on the shoreline, who think the man has left him, begin to shout again, and the boat turns and faces the crowd. And the man stands and speaks once again, and then imagine the crowd going silent. The man finding his feet, the sound of some splashing in the water. The voice is heard now, louder than the crowd who listens. Imagine the man in the boat now turning to the fisher folk and asking them to go into deeper waters. Imagine the small argument between the man and the fisher who is complaining that there was no catch last night, 
So what's the point of fishing now? What do they sound like? Listen as the men pick up the nets and throw them out into the water. Listen as the rolling splash as the nets hit the surface. Listen to the gulls. More gulls gather, crying louder. The water swirls, the boat bounces, and the fisher folk stare and begin to reach for the nets that are swelling in size. Listen to the sound of the rope being pour, pulled over the gunnels. The men strain, their voices loud. The water run as the nets are lifted and the heavy smell of fish coming out of the water. The lake water falls from the fish as they are raised out. The light sparkles. The boat comes alive with a silver floor as the fish are landed. And finally, the silence of the wonder. And then imagine Peter Neal realizing who this man could be. And Jesus say to him and to us, do not be afraid. Come with me and we will catch people. Will you follow? Let's pray. God of the deep waters, you don't want us to live our lives in the shallows, dipping our toes into the waters of faith or of living or of changing the world for good, then stepping back because it's too cold or there might be jellyfish. The dangers are real. Jesus is very clear about that. But so is the promise of life in all its fullness. Of a joy deeper than any we have ever known and a peace that the surface world can neither understand nor take away. So keep watch over us. Keep us safe and swim alongside us as we don mask and oxygen tank and, and plunge in going down and down and down to where the hidden treasure lies. As our eyes adjust, we take in the strange beauty of the scene, fabulous creatures that make us gasp and wonder, fearsome ones that we recognize from childhood nightmares. We see joy and sorrow gliding along together, their tentacles intertwined. We see shoals of nippy little doubts and questions chasing the more cumbersome fish of faith. We bump into lumps and wreckage from the past and we have to pick our way through them to reach the treasure that lies below. And now as the darkness deepens and the silence becomes more intense, let each of us, if we want to and as far as we're able, Explore this deep place to which we have been led. And if the time is right, and if we are strong in us, let us reach out for that treasure, whatever it might be, and take it back to the surface with us. God of the deep waters, bring us safely back home blessed and grateful for what you have shown us and for what we have been given. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Now, we're going to celebrate uh, communion together today. And we do have up here, um, we'll have some stewards ready who will help serve the bread and we have individual juice cups. We do have a gluten-free option if that is something that you need. Or if you feel uh, more led to stay in your seats, the ushers are happy to, to bring those individually packaged elements to you as well. And as we join together in communion today, I want to invite everyone. Ow. I think I mentioned last week I have to get pockets, right? <laughs> I want to invite everyone, all who are desiring God, to come to this table. 
because it's the Lord's table. It is not St. Mark's table or the Methodist table, but the Lord's table, and all are welcome. Now, we remember the night that Jesus sat at the Passover table with his disciples. Disciples who would later share news of what had happened on that night and when Jesus died and was resurrected to all the nations. That night, Jesus took the bread. He took the bread from the table and he broke it. He gave thanks to God and said that this bread was like his body. He too would be broken. He asked his disciples and he asks us that each time we eat it, that we should remember him. Then Jesus took the wine, a common drink at that table, and he gave thanks to God and he said, this is my blood poured out for all of you and all people to deliver you from sin. Words he chose that day because it was a well-known ritual to offer sacrifices of blood in repentance of sin to God. And he said, whenever you drink this, remember me. Jesus on that night was turning the tables of old practices and showing a new way forward in a relationship with God. And today we ask him to pour out your Holy Spirit on these gifts before us today. May this bread and fruit of the vine remind us of all of Christ's sacrifices and transform our hearts in order to follow his teachings. And so we eat and drink these symbols of Christ's body and blood today as we remember who Jesus was and what he did for us. We do this to repent of the things that we've done wrong and to ask for forgiveness. We do this together because we are one family, even one body. And God has called us together to go out into the world and to show and tell people what Christ has done for us. And I'd like to invite our servers to come forward. The table is set. Please come.
thank you, God, for this holy feast. May we be cleansed by this meal and brought closer to Jesus every time we eat and drink it. Thank you for your son, our teacher, and our salvation. Amen. And I'd like to invite you all once again to stand as you are led and able and join us in our closing song for today. Put out into deep waters. Again. What deep waters is God calling you to go back to? Let us sing. Where you go, I'll go. Where you stay, I'll stay. When you move, I'll move. I will follow.
know, we can, we can do that through our online giving or the QR codes on your bulletins. We do that each time we show up together and worship God. We do it through our missional giving here as well. And this month, St. Mark's is raising funds for Operation Classroom. Many of you know that it's a nonprofit organization that partners with the United Methodist Church in Liberia and Sierra Leone to empower people to rise out of poverty and through education. More information can be found on our website about this at stmarkscarmel.org slash missions. And financial donations, of course, can be given online or in that white envelope that's inside your bulletin as well. I am really happy to have anybody come up here and worship with me. So it is okay. <laughs> oh, as we go from this place today, let us take with us the message of Jesus, the instruction of Jesus, and the hope of Jesus to teach and to care, to feed and to heal to look forward in faith to a better world and the coming of the kingdom. Let's go change the world. Amen.